we all live together. Yes. Hey, y'all know the song. How it go? Live, live together. together now. Uh huh. Live, live together. That's it. Sing live together. it. Live together. Uh huh. That's mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Get it, kid? <laughs> hey. I enjoyed that. It was beautiful. Live together now. All right. Tosin Arts came in here and told us that we live and love together. And that is what Africa is all about. We were just talking before we took the break, and Nikita said, I'm getting ready to leave, but I don't want to go. Yeah, <laughs> and we don't want you I to go. I don't like leaving Ghana. It feels like, so my grandmother lives, still lives in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And whenever I leave her house to go back to LA, I have that same feeling when I leave Ghana to go back to LA. Like, it's, it's a tormenting feeling. It's your home away from yeah. home. It's tormenting. As, as it should be, because right. we are African Americans, and this is where our heart is. We believe that. Girl, you gave us the whole rundown in the first part of everything right. you've done. Yes. But the good thing of it, of it, about it was, and I hope you all can agree, the good thing about it was you told us you went from executive to assistant to not having something and then back on your feet, as you would say, you know, where the big thing happened. So you weren't even opposed to doing assistant jobs and things like that. I mean, you have to work. You have to keep, um, <laughs> you got to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. But one thing that, uh, my, one of my mentors, um, who actually lives here in Ghana, who mm -hmm. actually started me to, to come here to visit, she was a business executive, a very senior business executive at Xerox, and so she taught me business um, very early on. And so one of the, the key principles of business is to make money, yeah. right? And so if I wasn't making money as a producer, then I still needed income to, yeah. to, to come into my house, so you still have, you still have to work. Um, and embrace that. There, you know, Hollywood is, is a facade. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, the pictures aren't true, right? Like people really don't live in those homes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of the people are like that. Um, and so I'm honestly one of the only people that I've ever sat down with to dinner with someone and said, honey, I need a job. Can you mm -hmm. help me? Like, you know, this is a very slow season for me. Other people you would speak to and things are, always good and you know everything is always fine so when I took that uh, three and a half year sabbatical I became way busier in my career but then I started other businesses like I, I told you I started a content company in Namibia mm -hmm. I started a construction company um, I bought some real estate because I had to set myself up so that I would never have another winter season yeah. in entertainment if I ever have another winter season, I can still be fine because I'm always going to come to Africa and do missions work. Yeah. And I'm always going to teach. I'm, I'm always going to be doing those things. I need to have some kind of income to help mm -hmm. me finance the other part of my life aside from my career. Yeah. Let's talk about your career Yes, now. let's talk, please. Because I think it's important. Again, we started out um, this conversation with the whole um, issue of agents and managers. Yes. The difference between the two, um, and one of the things I think you enlightened me to earlier on, even before we started this conversation, but there's, there's a difference between an agent and a manager, and sometimes you may not even need it. Right, and there's a difference between where you are in your career when you have either, right? Mm -hmm. So an artist, um, and I'm using the word artist, when I say artist with, for this conversation, I'm, I'm saying that to mean a writer, a director, okay. um, I don't know that I want to include music talent right now because things are a little bit different. If there's anyone in the audience that has questions specifically, if you have a music career, I can address that. But right now, I just want to talk about uh, creative talents that writers and directors, and perhaps some producers. But you would, in, you would meet and engage a manager first. Yeah. That's the person to help shape your career and help you create what your brand will be. Um, so that person will walk with you, uh, let's say, to help you submit your film to Sundance, right? Um, and help you get placement. Um, and what should you do if you win an award at Sundance or if you uh, submit your film or should you submit your film to the Nichols program? These are programs, institutions that people like myself, even Sheila, track, right? So people who do very well um, let's say the top five on the Nichols writing program, or um, someone that, whose film is doing well at South by Southwest or at 
uh, San Francisco Film Festival or San Diego International Film Festival. Um, we track those people who do well in these different forms. It will be a manager who is helping you make the strategy to say, okay, let's put this project at this film festival or let's submit this project to this producer. Um, that person will help you create your career. A lot of times, and I will say on the music side, I'll bring in music here, um, a lot of times music managers will actually make the investment to pay for the studio time, to help you pay for um, the engineers and the producers to help you put your film together. He or she may be an investor. But that's a person that you meet early in your career that helps focus your career. And then later on, it's that manager that helps you then find an agent. Okay. Um, you find an agent or, or you get to the point where you need an agent when, if, if and only if you're working and you have a business and you're making money. Because all an agent is concerned with is money. That's it. You know, we may say sweet things to you in a room like the art is important and we're for, for you know, we're for the art and we, we want your art to be this way. Really all we want is money, right? And we want to be able to use you. And, and, and don't hear this to, to sound negative. Don't, don't hear this as manipulation. If, you, if, you, if your emotions hear what I'm about to say, you're not a business person and you need to enroll in some sort of business classes. We only want to make money off of you. And that's not a negative thing. Okay. Because we only make money when you make, make money. money. We only make 10% of the that's money right. you make it. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to make as much money as possible. That's right. I got to make as much money off of you as mm -hmm. possible if you're my client, mm -hmm. right? So what an agent will then do is get on the phone with someone like Sheila to say, I have a client who you may not be familiar with, who has this awesome script. You know, what they've done in the past is they placed the nickels, they had to film the show at Sundance, and now they this client uh, person of mine has this awesome script that I think is on brand for the company that you work for. Can you meet with that writer? Can you meet with this writer? Can you read this work? Can you consider it? Mm -hmm. Agents do that. Agents try to get you work. Um, and legally in the States, and again, I really don't know about here, but in the States, le legally, agents are the only people who can procure work for you. They can solidify work for you. Um, we don't necessarily negotiate, that's what uh, lawyers do, but we're the only ones that can call on your behalf and advocate on your behalf to say, hire this person. Okay. And if we're doing our job well, our clients are only off work for Christmas, okay. right? We're, we're calling people to get them work, right? So if you're a writer, uh, my job is to make sure you're sitting with all the executives at all of the, the film production companies, all of the, the studio, studio executives like Sheila, network executives on the TV side. So those people know you and they are looking for your content. They're hiring you, they're buying your content, um, or they're hiring you to come in to say, I have something original that we need someone like you to write, right? And as often as I can get you working, that's as often as you can make money and then I get 10% as an agent, right? Mm -hmm. So you only need an agent when you already have a business. An agent is not interested and, and, and not, the purpose of an agency or purpose of an agent is not to help you start your career. Yeah. So if you only have one script, if you're a director and you haven't directed a short film, if you're a director and you just came out of school and you only have one short or um, if you're a singer and you only have one song, you haven't even done an album yet, you don't need an agent. Mm -mm. And what I find is people get very, very frustrated, especially with me, they call me like, oh, Nikita, I need an agent. I said, no, you don't. Because you haven't made any money and I need to be able to make money off of you within the next 30 days. We need to be able to make money together. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand business, so that offends them, right? People of color get very offended. And, and sensitive when you talk about money. Sure. Especially when you're trying to make money off of them, That's it. not understanding that we're making money together. together. You're, I, I'm your agent, yeah. I make money when you work, I mm -hmm. work for you. So, um, you don't need an agent immediately in your career, okay? You don't need an agent, period, right? You don't need a manager, period. There are a lot of people who have been successful Absolutely. without representation. Representation will help you get a little further, a little quicker. And I think it's smart to have a team. Everyone knows that. I think it's very smart to have a team. 
However, the reason why I underscore that it's not necessary is because I see and I hear of people who don't push themselves forward and don't um, work hard on their career because they say, oh, I don't have an agency, no one will take me serious, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they relax. Um, you continue to work because agents are always looking okay. for, and not just agents, people like Sheila, studio executives, are always looking for the next big voice. Um, I would like, I would love to find someone who, you know, is working hard on their own behalf and executives already know them, but they just need a partner to go alongside of them. That's the ideal client. Okay. Um, and then something, and so, something I was saying to you earlier when we were preparing is, it's important for you to know who your audience is. Mm -hmm. And not just your end audience, not the audience that's, that's going to be looking at your content. Your audience is whoever you're talking to right now. That's right. Right? So if you're talking to me and you're saying, um, well, well let, let me go back for a few steps. When I used to work for Jamie Foxx, um, someone approached me. <laughs> so Jamie Foxx, everyone knows Jamie Foxx, right? Jamie Foxx does TV, he does film, he does music. And then we had a, a small management company. Um, but someone came to me, went and set up a meeting with me to talk about helping him launch a magazine company. Mm -hmm. And I worked for Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx does TV, does film, does music, does management. This guy wanted to talk about magazines. Mm -hmm. He didn't know his audience. Because I don't, we didn't have any outlets in the publishing business, sure. right? And so he lost me as an audience. You have to know your audience. You have to know who you're talking to. So for him to have a successful relationship with me, he should have talked to me about one of those four things that I'm doing. Likewise with an agent or a manager or a publicist, and I'm happy to, to talk about those things. But when you're speaking to a manager, or rather when you're looking, trying to engage a, an agent, you talk to that person about the business that you're, you've done and the business that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. The money that you've made, the money that you're trying to make. Um, you know, your goals in terms of your business strategy. Yeah. Um, a manager is a little bit different. You can talk to him or her about your creative career aspirations. Mm -hmm. um, and then that person will help kind of manage the business if, if they're doing their job correctly. So ultimately, you may not need either. I don't know that, I, I don't, I, I've never heard of anyone who honestly didn't become successful without either, okay. right? There are people who, you know, dig in and put their heads down and do a great project and they can submit it to, let's say, Sundance themselves yeah. and then people will come to them, right? Okay. Um, you can hire a lawyer to negotiate the deal. You, you do better when you have a team. I just don't want folk to not push their career forward because they don't have a team. Yeah. And I see that in the States. I don't know if it's like that here, but I see that in the States. People say, I don't have a, I don't have representation. They give up. Mm -hmm. Um, and you should not. You, yeah. you can succeed um, without a, people fire their agents all the time. I mean, there are a lot of very successful filmmakers and production companies that don't have representations. Their start may have been a little slower. Um, you know, but there are a lot. As a matter of fact, I know of one producer whose name I won't mention, who, if I mention his name, you all would know him, but I don't know that he's, he had an agent at one point. He doesn't have an agent now. Um, and it's because, and, and an agent's gonna have you working, you know, if, if he or she is doing their job correctly, and he just didn't wanna work. He wanted to take a project here and there, and I'm fine. Okay. And he does very well, but he just doesn't have that, you know, that push. If okay. you're one of my clients, I want you to only have off for Christmas. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a partnership. Right, it's a partnership and it's a business. Yes, it is. And if they make money, you make money. Absolutely. That's how it should be. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, it's Kay Stokes, General Manager and Executive Director of Dominion Television. Listen, thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends about the quality Christian lifestyle content that Dominion TV has to share. Yebeshe abio. See you again soon, and may God richly bless you. Keep watching.